All right, listen up. Listen up. The word of Yahweh is about to be read. Let's have some reverence in here. We're going to start with Numbers 10.10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your ascending smoke offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohim. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, they don't call that the awakening blast for no reason, right? Hey, let's pray real quick. Let's offer an offering up to the Most High. Let's bow our hearts. Father Yahuwah, Most High, we just come before you and bless you on this appointed time. Father, we thank you for giving us the Shabbat as a gift to man. Thank you for giving us your pattern, Father, working six days and resting on the seventh. Father, we just thank you for sending your son, Yahusha, our Messiah, our high priest, Father, our leader. And we are looking for his return, Father. And we just ask that you to help us, this congregation, and others across the four corners of this earth to be ready at the return of Yahusha. Help us with wisdom and understanding of your word that we may be faithful hearers and doers, Father. For you know your word says that they will be blessed. Father, we just ask that you'd meet us here in this appointment, as your word says, and that you'd mark your people, those who are walking in your ways, And Father, we just ask that your presence would be here as we rejoice in you, we rejoice in your Son, as we're going to dig into your word, Father, eat, and have discussions, Father, and sharpen each other. In the name of Yahushua, amen. So how many of you all here know, it's probably a rhetorical question, that Messiah or the Father does not like fence riders, right? In the book of Revelation, he's like, I wish you were hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And that's the thing that we see in the scriptures. There is no middle ground. It's light or darkness. It's sweet or bitter. It's life or death. And in the end times, there's a true seed and there's a deceived seed. Let's start with the book of Sirach, chapter 10, if you would. During my studies this week, I came across this verse. I haven't seen it in... A bit, and it just hit me. And we're going to talk about the end times, the true and the false seeds. The plants that grow and the plants that are choked up. We're going to read from Sirach chapter 10, verse 19. Those of you that may be new, the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, uh, was in the 1611 KJV under the Apocrypha section. It was included in the Greek Septuagint, and many other Bibles. This was considered Scripture for a long time. The dispensational movement removed this from the Protestant Bibles in the mid-1800s. So, Sirach 10, 19. Listen up. They that fear Yahweh are a sure seed, and they that love Him an honorable plant. They that regard not the Torah are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments of are a deceivable seed. We're going to come back to that at the end. I want to dig into that a little more. Let's go to Exodus 20. So even amongst the seeds that are planted, there's two types, either the true seed or the deceived seed. And obviously, the question today is what seed do we want to be? What seed are we going to be based off what the Word says? Exodus 20. And what we're going to confirm here, as a lot of us already know, but just in case someone doesn't, loving him is equated to keeping his commandments. Not keeping his commandments is equated to hating him. Exodus 20, verse 4. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them, for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, 
and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Let's go to the book of John, John chapter 14. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures today. John chapter 14. I want the children to answer and the children only. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, hi, Sheree, praise you. Well done. Well done. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise is what he says. So we see there's nothing new under the sun. Messiah reinforces the Torah. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Let's go to a couple of verses later. Verse 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, so it's not just about knowing them, we actually have to do them. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John 5 real quick. Just want to reinforce this is what the scriptures teach us. This is not a new doctrine that keeping his commandments is how we show him that we love him. And I'm also going to prove to you by the scriptures that by keeping the commandments is how we love our neighbor. 1 John 5, 2. By this we know that the love, I'm sorry, by this we know that we love the children of Elohim. When we love Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Elohim, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Are they? I feel like they're a delight. I don't know about how you'll feel. Delightful? Not burdensome? Praise you. So let's back up for a second. The book of Sirach said, those who love him will keep the Torah, and they're a true seed. Those who don't are a deceivable seed. How many of you here know that Yahweh likens us to trees? Yes? Or plants in general? How about that? Let's go to Isaiah 61. We'll just reaffirm by the word that he likens us to trees. And there's many parables about us being plants and how we grow and whether we bear fruit or thorns and thistles and briars, which is the opposite. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says this, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called... Trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified. Let's go to Psalm 52 8. Psalm 52 8. Psalm 52 8 says, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of Elohim. I trust in the mercy of Elohim forever and ever. That's kind of interesting, an olive tree in the house of Elohim. Does anybody know where this is kind of repeated? And maybe towards the back of the book? Book of Revelation, chapter 11. We'll read that in a second. Let's go to Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah eleven sixteen. We're going all over the book today. Jeremiah eleven sixteen says, Yahweh called your name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. This is talking about the ancient generations that he destroyed. Because why? Because they didn't bring forth fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he has kindled a fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Let's go to Revelation 11. Revelation 11, 4. Does anybody have any disagreement that the Most High likens His people to trees, plants, sometimes vines or branches or tree? Revelation 11, 4 says, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. Go back to Revelation 1. What are the candlesticks? Revelation 1, 20.
It says, the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven assemblies and the seven candlesticks are the seven assemblies. Maybe you're starting to get the idea here. Let's, let's go back to Leviticus 19 now. This reminded me of last week's study, Torah portion, Leviticus 19. Let's go to Leviticus 19, 23. There's a point to this, and we'll get there. Leviticus 19. This is uh, verse 23. This is talking about when they plant literal trees. This is talking about literal trees, but there's something figurative to be learned from here. Leviticus 19, 23 says, And when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then ye shall count the fruit of it as uncircumcised. That word is really uncovered. Three years shall it be as uncovered or uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise Yahweh with all. And in the fifth year, you shall eat the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am Yahweh Elohim. I really started thinking about this a little bit. And I want to turn to Luke 13 about an interesting little parable that Messiah teaches here regarding the tree in this little three-year deal that we see. And I want to get back to the point in a bit about Sirach. They talk about the two seeds out there, the true seed and the deceived seed. Luke 13, verse 6. So remember we just read in, in Leviticus about the tree in the three years here. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, that's a whole other discussion, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said to the dresser of his vineyard, behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it cumber the ground? And he answered and said to him, master, let it alone this year also till it shall dig about and dung it. And if it bear fruit... Well, and if not, then after that, you shall cut it down. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that our lives are likened to a seed. As I was just sharing with a sister that's new here, the way, the way I see it, and I know this is nothing new, it's been repeated, but our faith is the root and our obedience is the fruit. We'll get back to that in a second. Let's go to Matthew 3. Let's go to Matthew 3 real quick. You'll see John the Baptist said the same thing. Essentially, if we do not bear fruit, we will be cut down. And we're going to define the fruit in a minute. Matthew 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O oh, generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And don't think to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Let's go to John 15. So what I want to share with you all today, this is serious stuff. We're not playing a game here. As we mentioned last week, this is the oldest of battles out there. There's a war for your soul, and there's an adversary out there who is very wise, very tactful, a tactician, and has his army, and his job is to get you off the path and to not bring forth fruit. What Messiah came to do was to teach us how to bring forth fruit. John 15, a lot of parables here about gardening and trees and so this is Messiah speaking, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, or gardener. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit, just like a good gardener does. Anybody ever heard or seen, like, you got a rose bush with some stems that aren't bringing a whole bunch of roses, but you cut that off, and then all of a sudden, the whole thing starts to flourish. That's what it's talking about, purging here. 
pruning, purging. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Live in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Let me ask you a question. So he's saying here, without me, Messiah is like saying, without me, you can't do nothing. You can't bring forth fruit. You're going to be cut down and thrown in the fire. What happens to a tree when it no longer receives water for an extended period of time? What happens to it? Withers and dies. Who is Messiah? It's the Word. The Word is likened to the water, right? He's saying, without me, without abiding in the Word, without living according to what I have written for you, you will die. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein, so in this way my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. I also want to remind you, because in your ver- verse 8 it says, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear my fruit, so you shall be my disciples. There's another passage, I forget the address. It says, By this you shall know, by this shall all men that you know are my, yeah, I'm sorry, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have perfect doctrine. No, wait, no, 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 that's not what he says. What does he say? By this shall all men know that you are my disciples with your love to one another. So keep that in mind as we continue to grow and learn and how some of us grow at different paces, right? And some of us come to the truth a little quicker than others. Our patience with each other, I assure you, will be measured. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 29, 29. When's the last time you were in Chronicles, huh? 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 Great book, by the way, both of them, First and Second Chronicles. There's so much to be learned about what these kings did, good or bad, to learn from. It's amazing. If you're ever sitting there one day like, what should I read? Crack open Kings or Chronicles. First Chronicles 29, 29 says this. Now the acts of David the king, the, hi, first and the last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer and in the book of Nathan the prophet. And in the book of Gad the Seer, I read that because we're going to read from the book of Gad the Seer. I wanted you to see the, um, I wanted you to see that it's written here in the scriptures, the book of Gad the Seer. I'm going to read you a passage uh, from the book of Gad the Seer, and it has to do with this whole seed thing, being a true seed or a false seed. So I'm going to read from Gad the Seer, chapter 8, verse 7. Listen to this. Listen closely, please. He gave each person free choice. we got to love him for that. If one person wants to do good, he will be helped. But if a person wants to do evil, he will find a way. As for us, we will worship our Elohim who is king, our master, and our savior with love and awe. For your kingdom begins with the fear of Yahuwah. And if you truly understand him, you will depart from evil. Remember and obey the law, the Torah of Moshe, the man of Elohim, so that you will live a blessed life all of your days. Ask your fathers, and they will teach you. Ask your elders, and they will instruct you. Listen to this. Listen carefully. Do not just listen to the Torah, but be strong and valiant to obey all of it. Hearing is like the seed, but a deed shows that the seed has taken root in you. I want to read that again. Hearing is like the seed, but a deed shows that the seed has taken root in you. It then becomes a tree of belief which produces the fruit of true righteousness. What becomes of a smelly, rotten seed if no root will come out of it? So hurry, be quick to hear and act. For if you are a true seed, if you have belief and righteousness... 
Then Yahweh will bless you all with peace. Live in peace with each other. Love the deeds and those created in the image of Yahweh like your own selves, because it is a sign that you love the Creator if you love His creation, i.e., love each other. You cannot take hold of the one, but withdraw your hand from the other. Love Yahuwah and also man, so that it will be well with you all the days of your life. And that was written by David. That was captured by Gad the seer, his prophet, but that was from the words of David. I want to read a couple of confirming verses in the New Testament. Let's go to James chapter 1. James 1. James 1, 23. For if anyone be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face, natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But... Whoever looks into the perfect Torah, the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I just want to remind us, let's go to also Romans 2, while you're flipping there. I want to remind us that it's not just about our seat time in the Word and reading the Word, but it's applying it to our lives. Does that make sense? Because if we read it and don't apply it to our lives... I mean, it's, what is it good for? We need to have true change within our hearts, true change of what comes out of our mouths, true change of our behavior. Romans 2, Romans 2, verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil, the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with Elohim. For as many as have sinned without the Torah shall also perish without the Torah. And as many as have sinned in the Torah shall be judged by the Torah." For not the hearers of the Torah are just before Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be justified. That's by Paul, by the way. So let's talk about the fruit. Tim, where's Timmy? Timmy? Little Timmy. Little Timmy. Can you do Psalm 1? Can you do it? Because I want to talk about the fruit, and I want everyone to hear the fruit. Come on, y'all. Out of the mouth of babes. Because in John 4, Messiah says we have to worship Him in what? Let's hear about the truth side first. This is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the Torah of the will, and he meditates in the shore of the night. Where he is rabbi as a tree, bounded by the rivers of water, that yields its fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither, whatever he, whatever he does prospers. For the wicked are not so, but are like the trap which the wind blows away. For Yahuwah knows the way. Therefore, Yahuwah knows the way of the righteous. The wicked shall not stand of the judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For Yahuwah knows the way of the righteous. The way of the wicked shall perish. Praise Yah. <laughs> the point behind the whole thing is the person that meditates in the Torah day and night shall be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of water. It never goes thirsty. It's always nurtured. So we, as these trees of righteousness, well, we want to be at least. We're striving for that, right? In Isaiah that we read about in Isaiah 61, we need to abide in His Word constantly. And, like we've just read, to allow those things, those precepts to be changed in our hearts, to make true changes in our lives. And then we can be those trees of righteousness. 
So we learned about the truth side. So worship the Father in spirit and truth. That's the truth. Let's read the spirit. Let's go to Galatians 5. The truth side is just as important. Spirit side. Galatians 5, let's start at 19. So first he's going to talk about the works of the flesh, which what we'll see, all these works of the flesh are characteristics of disobeying the commandments, the Torah. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the such like of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Lawbreakers will not get into the kingdom of Elohim. Paul said that. The guy that, ever, that people use to support a lawless doctrine. He said the lawbreakers will not enter in the kingdom of heaven. But here we go. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, shalom, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Without such or against such, there is no Torah. Listen, we cannot become like the Pharisees did. These people who only found faults in others but didn't look inside themselves. We've got to have, just as important as the truth is, we've got to have that shalom. We've got to have that joy. We have to we have to interact with each other with meekness, with humility, with long suffering. Because I know the Elohim that says, without these things, remember we read last week in Hebrews 12, 14, follow shalom with all men and holiness, without which no one will see Yahuwah. So if we're like, if we're like just on it with the truth side, but we're failing here, we're failing. Period. Right? So just as much as we're focusing on refinement of the Torah in our lives, we can't lose sight of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, self-control. These things are equally as important, brothers and sisters, if we want to be the true seed, of course, that is. Let's go to Matthew 13. We've been talking a lot about seeds here and plants. Now, maybe with everything we've uncovered here, we can understand the parable of the sower just maybe just a little bit better. Because as we know, on this walk, Hasatan and his, and his angels and whoever he has employed in the human race and his cause are here to knock you off the path. That's his job. Matthew 13. The same day went Yahusha out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went to a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. Because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's jump down to verse 19 where he gives us the understanding here. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one, Satan, and catches away that which was sown into his heart. This is what was received, the seed by the wayside. So it's like someone that hears the truth, and Satan's like, pss, 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 and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm out. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word and anon with joy receives it, yet he has not root in himself, endures just for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by they are offended. This is people like, oh, yeah? Oh, faith and obedience. I get it. Right? And then life happens or whatever. And they're like, 
oh yeah, never mind. This is a little too hard. I'm just going to go back to where I was before. Bye. I've seen a lot of that. I have in this movement. I have. Let's go to verse 22. And he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So that's like people like, you know, gosh, my life was so much easier and now I'm doing this and I've got the Shabbat and my work won't give me Shabbat off and my parents are getting on me for this and everyone's ostracized me because I don't do Christmas anymore and this can't be this, this can't be it, this is too hard. I'm going back. But that's not us, is it? But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Anybody want to be these plants in here? So two people. Praise you. Three, four, five. Oh, all right. All right, those the hands. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying. So the point is, we need to be fruitful plants. We have to bring forth fruit. Or else, what did he say earlier? People that don't bring forth fruit. Spirit or truth. Gone. Cut off. Gone. Fire. See ya. He ain't kidding around here. This is not a game. This is life and death. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did these tares come from? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will you then we go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather my wheat into my barn. Think about it. Like I said from the beginning, light or darkness, sweet or bitter, life or death, wheat or tear. There's no in between. And I don't know if you know this about wheat, interesting uh, characteristic about wheat versus tares. They look similar all the way until it's close to harvest time. And when the wheat starts bearing fruit, what happens to the head of the wheat? Bows down, right, in humility. What happens to the tear? Does the tear bow down? Straight up, proud, right? Pride. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown... It is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches of it. How about that? How about when we actually become fruit-bearing trees, we benefit people around us or beings around us, right? That should be the end goal. Like when Peter talks about in the one passage, it's like, uh, you know, cleanliness is, leads to godliness and godliness. Everything leads up to the last one, brotherly love, Right? That should be the end goal of what we're doing here is our love for each other and even love for the lost out there to recognize they're just being deceived. They've been deceived regardless if it's Buddhism or Taoism or New Age or even mainstream Christianity, which does not walk in his commandments. I'm not here to judge them, but they're deceived. So we should be the long-suffering servants that want to share that goodness and love with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew, or so a little bit further down, verse 36, a couple more parables. Now, this is the parable, I call this the parable of the vineyard. This, is act, this parable is what I named the ministry, the parable of the vineyard. Some call it the parable of the, the uh, wicked tenants. Uh, Matthew 13, 36, sorry. Same chapter, just verse 36, sorry. Matthew 13, 36. Then Yehusha sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He that so... Oh, wait. Uh, I already read that part. Sorry. Where did I want to go? I'm sorry. Wrong address. Let's go to John 5. I'm sorry. Isaiah 5. Sorry. I'm all over the place. Isaiah 5. So I had the same, I had the same reference twice. So I got confused myself. Isaiah 5. We're going to talk about the parable of the vineyard. 
the actual parable. Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my well-beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press in it. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, right? It should bring forth the fruit. And it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now, go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge of it, and it shall be eaten up. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. Almost every time in the Bible when it talks about briars and thorns, it's the opposite of a fruit-bearing tree. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of Yahweh Sebaot is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for right ruling, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Now let's go to Matthew 21. There's the, the, power, the parable of the vineyard, sorry. My apologies. Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse 33. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants, the husbandmen, that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Pause real quick. These are obviously his prophets. Why did Yahweh send the prophets to his people? Praise Yah. To warn them that they were doing, they were going a wrong direction, that they were being disobedient to his ways. They were not bringing forth the fruit, and they're like, ah, we're just going to kill you instead. Verse 37. I'm sorry, verse 38. Six. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husband saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the master, therefore, of the vineyard comes, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They said unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. When I read this years ago, I was so, I felt like this was so profound that he he destroyed the husbandmen in the vineyard and he's opened it up to new people dwelling in this vineyard, which is us. The question that I had, and it's the reason I started the ministry is, what are we going to do now that we know that? Are we going to bring forth the fruits? Are we going to do that? And that's a question, and that separates the wheat from the chaff, right, from life, from death. All right, almost, almost, not really, almost finished. Um, Let's go to Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, verse 8. This is talking about Messiah, of course. It says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. Key word. Called of Elohim a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of Elohim that are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 
So obviously, by implication, he's saying we've got to grow. So if we're plants, if we're trees, we can't just stay a baby tree. We have to keep growing. This is a lifelong commitment. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, chapter 6, leaving the principles, so the basics of the doctrines of Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards Elohim, of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if Elohim permit. This is why we got to stay meek and humble in the wisdom he's giving us. If you, Father, would be so gracious to continue to give us wisdom that we may grow, Father. Give us the water of your word. Give us understanding and cultivation in our hearts that we may bring forth the fruits that you desire. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Ruach HaKodesh and have tasted of the good word of Elohim and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the son of Elohim afresh and put him to an open shame. Now listen to this. For the earth which drinks in the rain and that comes often upon it and brings forth herbs, meat for them whom, by whom it is dressed, receives the blessing of Elohim. But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we speak this way. For Elohim is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end and that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew 7 couple more passages, and then we'll get to praise, yeah, Matthew 7, and what we're going to read here in Matthew 7 is we are called to be fruit inspectors, contrary to what's commonly taught. We are called to inspect each other's fruit, and guess what? There's going to be a final inspection by the master himself of who gets in. Matthew seven thirteen. <clears throat> Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few be there that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, so they're going to look like one of us, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits, right? So he's calling us to be fruit inspectors. We need, to, we need to understand what's coming out of people's mouths, what kind of behavior that, that they're portraying. So you'll know them by their perfect doctrine. No, you'll know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a, tr a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings forth not good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. There's the three witnesses there. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. And again, spirit and truth. The truth side, we can't lose sight of the spirit side. The love, joy, peace, patience. Can we do it? Lyndon, can, can Left and Right Ministries do a much better Fruit of the Spirit song out there? Can I challenge you? Is that? Can, can we challenge you? Okay. Okay. Because the, the one that I've been shown, it's like way too fast. Love, joy, peace, patience. Blah, 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 blah. You're like, I don't even know what they're saying. I, how, how can I remember that? I, I, I kind of already have one, but it's, it's secret. So <laughs> just wait. Just wait. <laughs> All things shall be revealed. Just wait. <laughs> Nothing hidden. It's still in the, it's still in the works. It's All right. In the works. All right. I praise you. Anyways, okay. So here, so we're, we're called to in, inspect each other's fruit, right? But here, and, and right after he says that, not everyone that says unto me, because he's going to do a fruit inspection, not everyone that says unto me, Master, Master, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. So just because we call him the Messiah or say, I, yeah, I believe he's the Messiah or I'm a Christian or I gave my life to the, to the Messiah, 
That's not it. That's not enough. So not everyone that says unto me, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that actually does the will of my Father, the word actually is not there, my apologies. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name have done many wonderful works. And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. The, the Greek word there is anomia, which means lawlessness, without the law. All right, let's go to Isaiah 27. We got, this is the last passage, Isaiah 27. So if the worship team wants to come up here, we're about, we're about there. Isaiah 27. So this is, he, this is a song that Yahuwah is singing over his true seed, those, the trees of righteousness, those plants that are bringing forth the fruits that he's called us upon. Now watch this. Check this out. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of this group here. Actually, I'm just going to read it out of a different version. I don't like that version. I don't know why I have the NASB up there. Okay. Isaiah 27, verse 2. In that day, sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Listen to this. I Yahuwah, do keep it. I guard, he's going to guard it. He should shamar it, his vineyard. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. What a promise the Father has for his people, right? Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and the thorns against me in battle? Briars and thorns are those that do not bring forth fruit. I would go through them. I would burn them together. Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. And he shall, listen to this, and he shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. So who is with me on this that wants to bear fruit in spirit and truth? Let's go back to Sirach 10, 19, read that one more time. And we'll ask ourselves the question, which seed are we? Which seed are we striving to be? Sirach 10, 19. They that fear Yahuwah are a sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the Torah are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. But as the book of Hebrews said, that's not amongst us, is it? Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Testing. Okay. Okay. Let's lift up my hands. Let's say make some noise to the most high. On three, let's get the loudest hallelujah we have. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Praise yeah. We're going to do some worship music. Lyndon's going to allow uh, Bravo team to do a couple songs. We're going to start with a song called Seek My Face. And then we're going to do have a special guest up here singing Psalm 3. Praise yeah. Hi, baby. I'll dance with you in just a few minutes, okay? All right, so we're going to sing Seek My Face. Blessed are you, Yahweh, you gave us of your son so we could have hope, taught us how to walk in spirit and truth, he is the vine, through him we bear fruit, your words a lamp into our feet, our hearts desire with every single beat, your Torah inside his commandments we know, till that grace shall fall, we wait until it's blow away, when you said, seek ye my I said unto you, your face will I see, the sound that you far and go with the shout, we'll sing you praises, praises to our King, clap your hands, all his people, sing with joy to our Elohim, we are at the end. 
world is filled with lies and fans in the world. The people that seek him returning to his ways, leaving Babylon, Yahusha, don't delay. All can know his people, his doctrine drops his reign, keeping the commandments lest you walk in vain. His Torah is no burden, no matter what you're told, sweeter than honey and worth more than gold. When you said, seek ye my face, God said unto you, Chosen to him we belong. Worthy is the Lamb for he who was slain. Made his kings and priests by him we shall reign. Open ye the gates for those that keep the truth. You'll give us lasting peace. Our minds are stayed on you. Striving to shine bright like your menorah. Walking in the way, the truth, your Torah. I'll never go back. I'll never leave you. I'll never go back to my your. I'll seek your face for all of my days. You've given me peace by teaching your way. Special guests, Ruth, come on up. So, praise Yah, Lyndon allowed, Lyndon and Ruth allowed us to do this. We've got Ruth here who uh, is going to sing Psalm 3. Pra praise Yah.
millions of people have turned themselves against me all around. For you, oh Yahuwah, are a shield for me. Your mind, you're the one who lifts my head up and I cry. Let's just give it up for Ruth one more time. Good job, Ruth. Good job, Ruth. I believe it's First Chronicles 29 uh, talks about. Um, David uh, commissioning his son Solomon before the throne. Uh, well, really, yeah, before the throne, but then also uh, talking about, you know, all the things that are going to happen. And um, he starts off the whole commissioning with this amazing phrase. And it, it, just, it just rings over and over and over again in my ears. You know, he says, To Yahuwah be the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Indeed, all things are yours, O Yahuwah. Can we not say that enough? Amen, amen, amen. Uh, indeed, all things are yours. We glorify your name, O Yah. Let's, let's pray before we get into this, uh, into this song of creation here. Oh, Father Yah, we just come before you, and we thank you so much for this time of worship. Uh, Father, I just pray that you continue to, to guide us uh, as we uh, go about uh, in our tour portion, as we'll eat, as we're eating in the fellowship time, and in our conversations, Yah, with your, your Ruach, dwell with us and in our midst. And, oh, Father, we just, uh, we, we offer this time of worship to you as an ascending smoke offering unto your name. May it be a blessing to you, Father. We love you. We worship you in your name. Amen.
Come, Israel, and let us sing praises before our Elohim. O holy temple of Yah, resound with the praises of our King. Spirit of Yah, come here and dwell. He with your bride now as we tell of all your wondrous works and all your majesty. Oh, we bow before our King. Oh, yeah. Yours is the glory and power, yeah. Heaven and earth proclaim, yeah. Yours is the kingdom forever and all creation sings your name. Blessed are you, O King of kings, O Yahuwah.
we proclaim your name oh yeah Ooh, uh, there's power in his name yeah sing it oh yeah oh, we proclaim your name we yeah. are oh yeah oh we proclaim your name oh We love your name, O Yahuwah. We love your name. Praise Yah. If we could make sure that channel 11 is unmuted. Sorry, I got to I got to tune it a little bit. <laughs> it's a little out of tune. Woo! I think it's the heat in here everybody. There's energy in the room. <laughs> yeah, I was working. Praise yeah. Praise yeah. If you can give the man a from the sky and lead us cloud by day and fire by night if you can make the waters divide and to your land we safely arrive then surely in all things Yahuwah provides. We rely on you, Yahuwah, a strong refuge. For by your word we are fed, you're our daily. You can turn the water into wine And make the lame to walk and heal the blind You can raise the dead back to life Then surely in all things Yahuwah provides Yes, He provides On which we stand 
You're the rock on which we stand. We rely on you, Yahuwah, a strong refuge from by your We are fed, you're our daily bread. We rely on you, Yahuwah. Strong refuge by a word, we are fed. You're our daily bread. You're our daily bread. You're our daily bread. Strong refuge for by a word we are fed. You're our daily bread. You're our daily bread. You're our daily bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have time for one more? Maybe after. We we're gonna we we're gonna um, introduce a song. We don't have the lyrics for uh, introduce a, a song that we just posted um, last night. If you happen to catch our live stream, um, called "Guiding Me Along," and uh, I've talked to a few I've talked to a few of you about it, and um, it seems like that it's been con- it's been confirmed multiple times for me. We're all on a journey. We're all walking and, and trying to figure out the truth. We're trying to figure out his word, his way. We're on a journey, and we're trying to, to understand this. And um, it's only him that's guiding you in that pursuit. It's only him that's guiding you along in every life choice. But don't, but don't get discouraged when you hit the end of a road of something. You hit something where you're just, I don't know how to get past it. I don't understand what to do. I'm not sure how to figure this out. You know, um, the, the chorus of this song is, it, it's only you that shines the morning sun. It's only you that gives us our instruction. It is only you that shows me who I am when everything seems to go wrong. It's only you that helps me in the night, guiding me along. So when you're faced with a trial, don't, real, don't think that it's, oh, this is it, I'm, I'm done. You know, like we were talking about the seeds planted in the rocky soil you know, or thorns, you know, don't, don't be like the seeds that are just, that when they face trials and persecution, they're like, ah, oh, I can't do this. You know, consider it a blessing. Consider it joy, my brothers and sisters, says in James, when you face trials of many kinds. So as we sing this song, you may not know the lyrics, but uh, I encourage you to sing along. Band, I'm sorry, we don't have a chord chart for you, but um, yeah, just, just do your best. It's pretty, pretty simple. <laughs> I've been wandering this desert, finding only danger. Never know where I'm gonna go. Feeling lonely as a wonder, but I was seeking answers. When I felt your spirit touch my soul, I'd never know surrender, but lay down my heart's desires. And I let go of my control 
My flesh is telling me to run away To turn back from this place But you're all I want to know It's only you that shines the morning sun It's only you that gives us our instruction Yeah It's only you that shows me who I am When everything seems to go wrong it's only you that helps me in the night, guiding me along. Oh, 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 oh. it's only you guiding me along. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I want no more of you to come now and reveal the truth. I want to walk the narrow road. To the living word you lead me And you satisfy completely You show me things that I'd never know Keeping Sabbath there being clean Like Yahuwah I just want to be holy Writing Torah down within my soul Yeshua walk the path perfectly And I will follow in Lead, for he may stop my heart of stone. It's only you that shines the morning sun. It's only you that gives us our instruction. Yeah. It's only you that shows me who I am when everything seems to go wrong. It's only you that helps me in the night. In me alone. Oh, 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 it's only you guiding me along. Oh, 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 God, who you show me what it means to be holy, making your ways my ways, following the righteous path. Then, how could I turn aside? To the left or the right When you've shown your favor To the broken, weary sinners We all don't deserve the love That the Father has given us But yet He has delivered you and me From the power of the enemy So don't turn back or look away For Yah alone has given grace so that you and I can live to see His face. It's only you that shines the morning sun. It's only you that gives us our instruction. Yeah. It's only you that shows me who I am. Everything seems to go wrong It's only you that helps me in the night Guiding me along Oh, 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 oh. It's only you guiding me along oh, 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 oh It's only you guiding me along Oh, 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 oh. It's only you guiding me along Oh, 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 oh. Praise be to you. I, I wanted to mention, speaking, you, said, you said live stream. Uh, if you guys didn't check it last night, uh, check it out last night. Uh, I did an interview with Lyndon and Ruth about the power of music and how the enemy has used me, uh, music as a weapon of warfare to gather souls into his kingdom. But at the same time, Yah is raising up warriors like them and many others uh, to also fight the battle as well. And to speak truth, to proclaim truth, to speak it, and to keep it in the hearts of his people by music. So praise be to Yah. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. I thought it was a good conversation. I think we're already talking about part two, but anyways. Uh, ooh. 
Hey, Ryan, you want to come over up here and, and pray over the food? Father Yahuwah, we thank you for this Shabbat. We thank you for this gathering of all these people here and those who are watching and those who could not be here. We thank you for the food. We ask that you bless it. Bless it.